Now, since I mentioned prevention is better than cure, so 10.2 uh, is all about preventing fire and fire spread. What are the best techniques or the system must be in place and how we can prevent fire and fire spread in? Let's discuss the techniques of uh, Nibos theories like control measures to minimize the risk of fire in the in a workplace. Number one, best strategy is control combustible and flammable materials. And here again, the best helping hand is the master list of chemicals, master list of all combustible materials, you know, or even flammable materials. According to the flammability, you can filter how many materials are there, extremely flammable. Could be solids, liquids, and gases. And also, and the second best strategy is control your hot works. Control ignition sources, you know, like systems of work, smoking, and arson as well, and use of electrical equipment in flammable atmosphere. Hazardous area classification must be there, like zone-wise, or this is high risk or less risk or whatever. So zone-wise, we will discuss in detail. Systems of work like hot processes, machinery, and electrical equipment, and good housekeeping is critically important. We can't ignore good housekeeping in our fire prevention plans. In now, a few more uh, control measures: uh, how to control combustible and flammable materials. The one thing is we can eliminate the hierarchy of control again. You know, and if elimination is not possible find out the substitute, which is lower risk. Like if you are using solvent-based paint, change with water-based, which is less flammable, and of course, less toxic as well. So minimize quantity, rather than putting a lot of uh, stock inside, control your, you know, have some minimum inventory level or maximum, define that one. So stock control, housekeeping and waste management, safe use and storage in protected, dedicated buildings as well. So that means it's a game of fire prevention system, fire safety system, you know, fire protection system. So we are talking about system. And system means it's a teamwork. Janitor to general manager, everybody have to play a role. It's not like, again, only the responsibility of safety department. Now, control of combustible and flammable materials, make sure they are stored outside and storage area should be fenced with secure and lockable gate. Warning signs must be displayed so people can easily get familiar, you know, that this area is prohibited or without uh, permission, they can't go there. Ignition sources eliminated and bottle chained upright. If you're using like compressed gas cylinders, make sure they are stored upright position separate from the other buildings. Empty and full bottles separated and oxygen bottles not to be stored with LPG. They return to store immediately after use. So these are again, and I'm sure uh, Sadara Mashallah would have much, much better than Nibosh theories. A lot of uh, technically, according to the nature of your business, you will have more detailed controls, Mashallah. And uh, your employees would be falling up also. Now, control of ignition sources, all electrical equipments, hot wood, smoking, cooking and heating appliances, mechanical heat or deliberate ignition need to be controlled. These are some of the examples of ignition sources. One of the incident happened, you know, in the confined space, two guys, they uh, completed a spray, a spray painting. It, it was a 12 hour shift, but 10 hours almost they worked there. Then another team came, two guys, and they started smoking. And after smoking the cigarette, they uh, threw the cigarette butt on the floor and sudden fire started up because the area was already having oxygen and uh, uh, fuel inside the air. Only missing part was the heat and they gave that heat the moment they threw on the ground because mostly the extremely toxic or flammable gases are heavier than air, like H2S is heavier than air. So the moment they threw that uh, cigarette on the ground, it started burning up. Now they are giving more fuel, like uh, with their safety shoes, they are pushing, you know, and uh, trying to eliminate oxygen from that. But, but uh, they also caught up and both guys were immediately died, you know, because in the confined space, it's hard to get second chance. 
to escape. That is why smoking should be prohibited in all uh, sensitive areas. And the designated areas must also be allocated oh, by having detailed risk assessment or kind of uh, analysis, you know, rather than just simply define this is our smoking area. Now, use of electrical equipment and flammable atmospheres. Flammable gas vapors does mix with air can be explosive. You know, when uh, because of H2S or some other toxic gases, we get a kind of a layer, we call it uh, pyrophoric iron sulfides and some combustible dust layer on the pipes. If it is not taken care, a small smart spark, if that area is already the red zone, so immediately the whole plant could be in trouble. One of the incident happened, you know, the maintenance technician, he kept his key in his front pocket. And while working at height, just he bent out and, you know, that key fell down on that pipe, which was having pyrophoric iron sulfide layer and also combustible dust. And because of that small spark, the whole plant was burned out. So sometime, you know, this, that is why uh, I'm recommending, you know, you guys, after this IGC qualification or certification, inshallah, you should surely go for negotiate PSM, process safety management. And that is the real need of your, as per the nature of your business, to be very honest. But uh, it's your choice. I'm just recommending because as per the uh, kind of industry you're working in, national legislation control, use of electrical equipment in Europe or ATEX directives. It's not like always fireproof equipment or fire proof or fire resistant materials, even explosion proof. You know, like ATEX directives are helping us, the certain kind of material is produced in a way that it can resist even in, in case of explosion, like ATEX approved uh, lights in our chemical storage areas. Because in case of explosion even, that lights still should uh, uh, work on and not to demolish the whole process, you know. In UK, uh, transpose the dangerous substance and explosive atmosphere regulations like 2002. This is the most important slide because here we are going to, especially in Sadara, I'm sure you guys could have uh, zone wise, uh, the extremely explosive areas or less explosive or the place where you believe uh, explosive conditions are not available. So you're going to give some zone numbers like zone zero as per the technical studies of Nibosh even. Zone zero, a place in which an explosive atmosphere is present but continuously or for long period or frequently. And zone one is all about a place in which an explosive atmosphere is likely to occur in normal operations occasionally. And zone two, a place in which an explosive atmosphere is not likely to occur in normal operations, but if it does occur, will persist for a short period only. So we have zero is more terrible, and uh, one is again explosive, but not uh, likely to occur in normal operation occasionally. And zone two, only a short period of time, but still explosive atmosphere, uh, but not likely to occur in normal operations. But if it does occur, will persist for a short period only. There are corresponding standards for dust explosion hazards. These are called zone 20 and zone 21 and zone 22. So they link, they link like zone 20 link with zone zero and zone 21 link with zone one and zone 22 link with zone two. So accordingly, they corresponding to each other. And as per the category, as per the zone wise, we decide what kind of electrical equipment we are going to use in those flammable atmospheres. Like electrical equipment category one, we can use in zone zero or zone 20. And category two electrical equipment, we're gonna use in zone one or zone 21. And this is a very detailed subject in process safety management. Like if you go for Nikosh PSM, this is one of the most important area, but more deeper they're gonna discuss there. So category three is all about zone two or zone 22. 
So it's not like only area definition or selection of equipment. We truly need a complete system of work. That is why the permit to work for control of hot work. And hot work, uh, we all know, we need to remove flammable materials from the area. We have to cover items that can't be removed. Sweep the floor, damp down wooden floors, provide suitable fire extinguishers, ensure fire watcher present in the area and check area after work has finished. But make sure you are not doing any hot work above 0% LEL. Because we need 0% LEL, lower explosive limit, always 0% before even we decide to go for hot work, especially in the confined space. Now, good housekeeping is not uh, relevant to only the simple areas, the good housekeeping, the cleaning of floors. No, 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 it's waste-free. The area which, is, which does not have any unnecessary things or uh, mixed up things, it must be waste-free, tidy, well-ordered, and also the pedestrian route must be clear, you know. So that is uh, a complete shop floor management or the 5S uh, Kaizen management, good housekeeping techniques we can implement to make sure a good housekeeping. And this is an important pillar for fire prevention system. Now, storage of flammable liquids, how are we gonna do is, we truly have to understand the flash point of those liquids, the lowest temperature at which a liquid can form an ignition, mixture and air. The vapor can be ignited by an external ignition source, but combustion is not sustained. The lower the flash point, the easier it is to ignite the material. So the lower the flash point, the easier it is to ignite the material. So I'm sure uh, being uh, working in a chemical industry, you surely would have understanding, you know, what is the flash point of each chemical or kind of environment you are working in. And liquid are classified as flammable, highly flammable and extremely flammable. If you see the label of, uh, even the label you are uh, uh, putting on the drums or the containers, surely you will highlight uh, kind of a diamond symbol, you know, and in, in which red color would be presenting flammability level. And if you put four in red color, that present the extremely flammability of that uh, particular chemical. And if it is like three, two, or zero, or one, or something like that, accordingly, low flammability, or maybe uh, uh, zero percent flammability of uh, different chemicals are there. Now, highly flammable or extremely flammable. So flammability level must be mentioned on the label actually. And that is the part of hazard, hazard communication, the labeling requirement. And again, it's a legal requirement also. And most importantly, on that, uh, uh, along with that red color, you will see the blue color also that presents the health hazards. And if you see four in the blue color, that means extremely hazardous to our health actually. And if you see uh, four in yellow color, that shows the radiation, how radiative that material is. And there is another one, the white, that means the kind of combination with the other, other what kind of PPs we have to use. So what I mean is everything is talking to us. That is why it's part of HASCOM, hazard communication. So labeling uh, plays a vital role. But key point is the understanding of our employees. What is meaning of four? What is meaning of red color or blue color or yellow color? How the symbols are presenting? What kind of hazards they are presenting? You know, Because several symbols we mentioned there. Now, if it is a storage of flammable liquids, if it is category three, how are you gonna, how much in liter maximum you can store and what is the flash point or so? Flammable liquids of category three, flash point is uh, 23 degree to 60 degrees Celsius, easily ignited with a heat source and a match and maximum storage in work area should be less than 250 liters. And uh, if you have some sort of passion to be the fire expert, I would recommend go for NFPA qualification, you know, National Fire Protection uh, this is kind of agency or association in USA. So make sure you get some comprehensive uh, qualification from their side. 
because several several fields are there it's not like only safety within the safety you can be the auditor trainer fire expert you know advisor well, manager supervisor safety officers several areas just by going through this uh, pattern and several safety professional i noted they are the ceo of the company also because they understood the whole system and they are proving themselves the best uh, leader of the company so same way the category 2 is highly flammable liquids flash point is below 25 23 degree and boiling point is above 35 degrees celsius so maximum story must be below 50 liters and category 3 almost also comes in the in the same way like flash point is below 23 and the boiling point is above 35 and this is also very easy to ignite at room temperature so category 1 very easy to ignite at room temperature even now we have uh, a kind of a group exercise consider the storage of flammable liquid like uh, ceton or acetone or petrol discuss safe storage arrangements if such substances were used at work what are the best storage practice uh, storage practices you're going to share in for petrol and acetone within your company over to you please how would you design what rules you're going to implement to make sure the flammable liquids like acetone and petrol is not going to be terrible god forbid yes how are you going to store and in process safety management of nibosh qualification you will see the designing of the storage areas also like storage tank and how it is it need to be designed what kind of design should be there you know but here they are only talking about the storage facility like flammable liquids you are going to store look at the picture also how you going to make sure not a single drop of oil is falling down what is the meaning of secondary containment what kind of ppes you going to use what kind of drums you going to make sure how far you will keep those uh, flammable liquids from your uh, working areas and what kind of uh, design of the storage area would be there how the wall should be what kind of uh, lights you have to use if paint is there on the wall what kind of that paint should be there so complete designing of that area and the best practice to store those liquids or flammable liquids any one of you want to add something otherwise we can move on and see how nibosh is guiding us you know for us uh, here in sadara yeah you know most of the drums we are using like loboyer drums and some this is not uh, any flammable drums that's why you know we don't uh, we don't have this uh, my, this this uh, sample okay so yani we have yani that's uh, for the storage area we have that yani precaution like fire extinguisher we have uh, like um, uh, yani uh, uh, like trench of oil and uh, if there is in case of spillage and mm. some other thing and some other things Uh, like uh, but flammable uh, yeah, yani this is a different thing we don't have it actually excellent excellent but but you know you finished this story by saying that your drum is itself is fire resistant or you know it protects from fire so that is uh, that is the best preventive measure you know excellent mashallah but these are if there is any kind of storage of flammable liquids the best thing is decide the minimum volume of that liquid which is required and liquid should be in properly labeled container labeling is as we discussed is important ideally the container will be metal with a self closing lid and use a metal tray to catch spills and have absorbent material available use away from heat and ignition sources don't nearby make sure 
no heat or ignition sources are there ensure that workplace is well ventilated and return containers to safe storage after use so these are some of the rules but uh, as i already mentioned several time you guys are marshal uh, leading by example so i'm sure you have much much better than uh, nibosh theory system here no storage of flammable liquids small quantities like use minimal quantities store seed lid on or self closing lid flammable cabinet make sure it is fire resistant lockable lid doors and clearly sign spill tray and away from ignition sources larger quantities is some purpose built single story flammable store segregated chemicals built of a non combustible materials lightweight roof or explosion relief build doors outdoors away from the other building or having fire wall protection as well the source suitably uh, suitably fenced in a secure area all electrical system is sprinkly safe or all other ignition sources are eliminated make sure it's well ventilated the doors are lockable spillage is containable and most importantly the adequate fire fighting equipment and suitable fire safety signs are there regular checks still be required for security safe storage of substances and clear safe access for Uh, fire service at equipment means of escape so some of the rules quantity wise if it is uh, large quantities compartmentation could also be required keeping fire and smoke in and out of the area of building creating enclosed sealed boxes using fire resistant materials so it's a game of designing it's a game of prevention you know and using fire resistant materials fire is contained in one part of the building so it is not going to spread even conduction convection any method is not going to apply and spread this fire it is all resistible system is there only fully effective if opening in the compartment walls are sealed local building regulations play a major part in applying high standards of compartmentation to the workplaces and that would also be in built within sadara for sure inshallah characteristics of the fire door make sure they are capable and able to withstand fire for a set period for example 30 minutes even more than that the more the minutes more expensive uh, price you need to pay in the market so fitted with self closing devices fitted with intumescent strips like expand brand hot and also fitted with a cold smoke seal and have v and panels of fire resistant glass and make sure it is clearly labeled so let the system Uh, give the highlight how it is going to be managed and properties of common building materials if it is concrete make sure it usually perform well in a fire so all boq forget about only concrete steel brick or timber anything you are using within your building you have to evaluate based on which international standard you are buying that material and what are the pros and cons or you know kind of benefits especially in shape of fire prevention how that can create steel and brick timber is uh, uh, surviving you know in case of fire incident the surface treatment can improve fire performance like encasing steel and concrete and intermittent paint insulation or wall coverings all the design insulation must be fire retardant and wall coverings can be flammable so need to be carefully selected these are the properties of common building materials protection of uh, openings and voids uh, sometimes we by design kept some kind of you know openings like service conduits and air handling ducts voids is kind of stair walls wells or voids between floors and roof voids protection is self closing shutters and fire break walls procedure to seal any openings with fire retardant form you know so whatever design features even you have that should also be protectable in case of any incident especially that was all about the fire prevention techniques